In many applications, the Laplace transform of a function f is used. One of the benefits of using a Laplace transform is that it converts differential equations into algebraic equations, and it is usually easier to solve the latter ones. In this video, we will make the first steps. What is a Laplace transform, and how do we compute it for a few functions? Furthermore, we will see that the Laplace transform is linear, and that helps a lot because this implies that the Laplace transform of a linear combination of functions is a linear combination of the Laplace transforms of the separate functions, which will help us a lot. So, how is it defined? You have some function f of t. So, what is the Laplace transform of f of t? So, we will call it f of s, that's just some notation. What do you do? You put it here inside an integral, you multiply with e to the power minus st, you integrate with respect to t over 0 to infinity. So that means that after the integration the t is gone and you are left with an s, so you are left with some function f of s, and that is what our Laplace transform of f of t is, form suitable f of t. I will look later into what this suitable means exactly. Let us do a few examples first. Simplest function of course f of t is just 1. So what happens then? Well, what do we do? f of s, we put the f of t here, we multiply with e to the power minus st, we integrate with respect to t from 0 to infinity. So there we go. Uh, how do we do this integral? It's an improper integral, so we integrate from 0 to L and then send afterwards L to infinity. What do we get? Antiderivative of e to the power minus st is easy, it's e to the power minus st times minus 1 over s. We have the boundaries 0 and L here, plug them in, upper boundary minus e to the power minus sl and lower boundary just 1. And then if we send uh, um, L to infinity, this uh, term disappears, provided s is bigger than 0, and we uh, are just left with 1 over s. So our Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. Next example. What happens if we have f of t equals e to the power a t? Let's try to compute the Laplace transform of this function. So again, we have our f, we multiply by e to the power minus s t, we integrate from 0 to infinity with respect to t. So first we rewrite the function a bit as an e to the power a minus s times t. Then we have to integrate with respect to t, so we have the antiderivative of e to the power a minus s times t, which gives us a 1 over a minus s times the exponential. Then we plug in the boundaries, 0 and infinity. Now the lower boundary gives us a minus 1 over a minus s, and the upper boundary uh, gives us a zero, provided this stuff over here is negative, so provided s is bigger than a. So f of s exists, provided s is bigger than a, and f of s equals minus 1 over a minus s equals 1 over s minus a. So that is the Laplace transform of e to the power a t. And then this linearity, that is really handy. If you have the Laplace transform of a linear combination of functions, then you have to integrate this linear combination. But uh, integration is linear, so you can split it into two parts, uh, the integration of f and c, then the integration of g. And then what it reads is, uh, this part is the Laplace transform of f, this trans part is the c times the Laplace transform of g. So the Laplace transform of f plus c times g is the Laplace transform of f plus c times the Laplace transform of g, which is linearity of the Laplace transform. 